Hello out there, all you wonderful kids. How are you doing today? I am going to teach you today how to draw one of my favorite monsters that's in my new monster book, Opposite Day. And the one I chose is what I call the Happy Mad Monster because he makes me laugh every time I see him. So let's start today with the things that you need to do this drawing video, okay? The first thing you need is a good quality piece of paper and it kind of needs to be big. You know, can you see the size of that paper? Like a normal sheet of quality paper. Mine is kind of thick, I like that. You don't have to have really thick paper, but I like to have thick paper. Then the next thing you need is a pencil. Now, most of you that know me know that usually I first draw something with this. This is called a disappearing pencil. My, I usually use blue, and that's because it doesn't show up as much underneath your final color. But most of you don't have these right now, and it's a little hard to see on the camera. So for today, I'm gonna to use a regular pencil. But remember, you always wanna use a pencil first because if you make a mistake, then what do you do? You can just erase it and there's no problem. Then after that, you're going to need some kind of permanent marker. This is my favorite kind. These are called Copic or Copic markers and I enjoy them very much and this is the kind I use, but anything that has a nice thin top to it, see that? You could even use a ballpoint pen if you want or you could use, um, you know, like Sharpies that are really, really thin, but you need something that's more permanent. That's your second step. Then the last thing you need is watercolors. Here I have my favorite brush that I always use all the time. I love this brush. It's kind of a medium, um, kind of a medium dimension, and it's kind of furry on the top, which I like for the effects I'm trying to do, but you can pick whichever one you want and you need water in a cup, of course, and then you need your watercolor. There's so many different kind of watercolors that you can use. This is my new favorite. I don't know how to explain these any better than to say they are gel watercolors. What you do is you take off the top and you color on a different piece of paper and then you actually use that as your watercolor. Let me show you. Look at that. And then you use that as your watercolor, okay? But that's the kind that I love to use. There's so many kinds of watercolors and you can use whatever you have around the house or whatever you want to use. The last thing you need, you need a little cup that has a nice circle around the bottom of it. Kind of a little circle. See how little that is? It's only about as big as my middle knuckle there. That's because you're gonna be drawing an eyeball on the monster, and I like my eyeballs to be nice and perfectly round. You don't have to use this if you don't want to. You could just draw a circle, but it's kind of nice to have something to trace around to make it look really professional. And if you'd like, I have my very special markers. Look at all of those colors. We're gonna need those markers mainly just to do the eyeball. The rest of it's gonna be watercolor when it's finished, okay? So those are the things you need. Now we're gonna get started. And today what we're gonna do is we're gonna work from the bottom of the picture up to the top of the picture. That helps me get a good dimension on what I wanna do. This little monster is a tall monster, all right? So let's get started by drawing his legs. We're gonna take our pencil and we're just gonna draw a funny little leg with a little bit of a knee right there. And we're gonna come out and go down and draw one sharp toe claw and two sharp toe claws. And then we're just gonna go straight and go straight back up. See, how does that look? Isn't that cute? Then we're going to draw the other side. This side's gonna have a funny knee up here because we want our monster to be pretty silly. And then it'll come down there with a little blurb out. And then you're gonna draw out and do one sharp toe again and another sharp toe again. And then you're gonna make them connect in the middle. So do you see that, what that looks like? Isn't that funny? Once you have those two legs finished, you're gonna draw an extra toe on each leg. There's one toe coming up like that. 
and one toe coming down like that because my monster actually has three toes on each foot. Now you need to do a couple of little what I call monster wrinkles. So we're going to do a monster wrinkle right there and a monster wrinkle right there. Monster wrinkle there and a monster wrinkle there. That's funny, huh? It makes it almost look like elephant feet a little bit. And then you're going to separate off the toes so that there is actually nails on the toes. They're, ooh, they're going to be sharp like talons, okay? So you see that? You can take a couple of minutes and finish that. Looks pretty good, doesn't it? One other thing you can add that's really fun that I like to do with this monster is I love polka dots. So you can just add a few polka dots here and there. One there, one there. See how you can do a half polka dot or a full polka dot. Aren't those cute? So there's your legs. All right. Very good. The next step is one of my favorite. I love to draw furry hair and the top of this monster is furry. So you're gonna start down here and you're just gonna do some strokes of fur. Fur, fur, fur. You can make fur kind of stick out if you want to a little bit. More fur, more fur. Make it go different directions if you want. You can go that way, it can go that way. Isn't that funny? can go all the way over here. You can make another one there. <laughs> Isn't that cute? Then you can come up here and do some fur that sticks out this way. Do some fur that is down. You don't never want the fur to all look the same because that would be silly because then the monster would be too neat and we want the monster to look pretty silly. All right. And then at the top, you can make fur sticking out. Look at that. Isn't that funny? So there's what you want to do. See that? See all that fur? Take a minute and do that. Looks pretty cute, huh? Then the next thing we need to do is draw his very, very sad mouth. So when you get done with your furry part, here's his mouth. You start from this side, you go up in a little curved V and go back down. There's his sad little mouth. And guess what? His teeth are really messed up. So they stick up at the top of his mouth. Look at that. You can do a big tooth. You could do a teeny tiny tooth. You could do a really big tooth over here and a little tooth. Look, isn't that cute? So now you have his legs and his furry body and his mad mouth. Look at that. Very good. Now the next thing you need to do after you have his mad mouth all finished is you're going to take your cup that I have and you're just going to put that cup right there. See how that is? It's kind of over top of the mouth but underneath this crazy furry stuff up here. You're going to just put that right there and draw around it. Draw all the way around it. Oh, that's going to be his eyeball. Look at that. Isn't that funny? <laughs> now, this monster is kind of upset and grumpy and sleepy. So we're going to give him eyelids that look sleepy. So on half the eye, you're just going to draw a little stripe. See that? Now, one of the things we're going to learn a little bit about how to do is do a little bit of shading with your pencil and in cartoon style and all you do is this you just draw some lines one line two line three line four line see that just a little bit of shading you see that now underneath that you're going to draw a half circle <laughs> and then another circle oh do you see what's happening we're starting to create the whole eye isn't that cute now, eyeballs reflect a lot of light, and so it's really important that you show a lot of light in an eyeball. So if you will just draw a little, kind of a box like that. Can you do that? Let me hold that up close for you so you can see that. See that little box? You're gonna draw that box inside of that smallest circle, okay? 
Then in the next circle, you're going to draw a little stripe like that. Again, all we're doing is adding some light into the eye. Do you see that? Very good. And then if you want to, you can do a couple more of what I call shadow stripes over there. So there's your eyeball all finished with it. Look how funny that already looks. Isn't that cute? We don't even have any color on it yet. It already looks super cute. Okay. There's only two more steps to do. What is this monster missing? He's got legs. He's got a body. He's got an eyeball. He's got a frowny face. He's got teeth. He's got hair. He's missing his arms. Oh my goodness. Well, this guy's arms are kind of like monkey arms. They're long. So let me just draw one on one side. You can start anywhere on the fur you want to, about halfway down. Come out like this and give him a little elbow. See that elbow? Go down like that, make a little circle. Come back up and back up into there. Whoop, there's one arm. You see that? Now we'll do some more work on that side in a minute. Now let's do the other one. It's gonna be pretty much the same, okay? Do that, do a little elbow. Might wanna make that arm a little bit different if you want. Little circle down there. Come back up. Go in and up. Oh, look at that. He's got his little arms now. See his arms? Isn't that cute? Now he's missing some fingers, isn't he? So let me show you how we do the thumb. The thumb is just a little thing that comes out like that. Isn't that cool? Let's do the thumb on the other side. Ta-da! The rest of his fingers, you can do something like this if you want to. See? Just did like a little L right there and then a little line. And this side, you could even just do some little lines like that. Like that. So there's two different ways. So there's one way. Whoops. There's one way that I did the hand. There's the other way that I did the hand. Okay. And you can do one different on each side because we don't normally hold our hands exactly the same on both sides, right? So there you go. So there is our little monster all finished. Oops. There's a couple of little details missing on the arms. Let's make them polka dot the same way the legs are. That way his arms and legs look the same. How about that? That's cute, isn't it? There we go. What do you think of that? Isn't that cute? I like it. Now, the next important thing we need to do is he's got some hair on his arms. You can pick anywhere you want to do this. Just make a few spots where there's some hair sticking up because he's a silly monster, so he can have hair whenever wherever he wants to, right? There we go, that's all finished. I like it, what do you think? I think it's pretty cute. All right, once you've finished with, and remember, if you made any mistakes, you can stop the video, you can erase whatever you need to and redo it. Don't feel rushed. You should never feel rushed as an artist. You should always do it the way you feel best about it. Now the next thing we need to do is go back over everything with a permanent pen, all right? So I'm gonna do that with you. This is basically tracing, okay? And I like to do this, it will just make it all look better. Make it look a little darker. See, I'm just going back over each of my lines that I made, but this time I'm doing it with a pen. If you are not perfectly on the line, that is okay. That is no big deal, especially if you use that disappearing pen sole that I was talking about. The one that has, um, a blue color or there's some that have a red color because those you actually once you make a copy of the paper you won't even see it at all right now I'm focusing on doing the hair because that's probably the hardest part to trace you can do the same thing just trace all of your lines this is really important because it makes it look a lot more professional. So now I'm gonna very carefully go around my circle that I created. 
There we go. I'm going to go around the little circle in the middle. Go around that. Go around the next circle. That. Do my little shading lines. Do my shading lines here. That's looking pretty good, huh? Oops, got to do his mouth. Got to trace back around it all. Oops, I missed a piece of hair there. Missed a piece of hair here, too. Got to get all that hair. Oop, I'm getting his teeth. There we go. So the main part of the body is now traced. And that's just a really good idea to do. Don't leave things just in pencil, unless you're just wanting to do a pencil drawing. That's fine. But it's really nice if you go back over everything with permanent marker, once you have it. Whoop, getting the little lines here that are his fur on his arms. Getting all the little dots. Oop, got to get his little thumb and his fingers. Okay, we're almost done. Let's do the other arm. Now the good news about permanent marker is that once you start your watercoloring, it's not going to blend in or make a mess. It's permanent, so it will just stay right where you put it. There we go little fingers. Okay, we're almost finished. Now let's just do the little feet down here. Oop, his big talons with his big long nails on his toes. Do his little monster shading here. <gasps> Draw right straight down the center and get that and then get the little spots on each side. Oh, that's great. One on that side. Ooh, more monster shading. Let's color, or let's trace the whole part of his leg all the way down to the talons again. His little claws. And I am finished with that. Now again, I did that really fast, but that's because I draw every day and all the time. If it takes you longer, especially to make sure you do a really nice, neat job, then you can just turn this off and finish up and then restart it. We're going to move on now to the color. The first part of the color is the most important thing to me, and that is the eyeball. Eyes are so important whenever you do any drawing. They're super important. You get to pick whatever color you want to draw to color the eyeball. Now the middle part of the eyeball should be black. Every eyeball is always black. So I'm going to take my black marker. Do not color that little square that I showed. See how I'm coloring around that little square right there? Do not color that. That is the light that's in the eyeball and you need that to stay white. Okay. Go. Gonna see how I'm being very careful. This even takes Gigi a long time here. This takes quite a while to do. All right, there we go. So that's the middle part of the eyeball. See? See how I left that little spot and it makes it look a lot more like a real eye. All right, now you get to choose whatever color you want your eyeball to be. Um, in the original book, when I drew this drawing, um, I made the eyeball kind of a turquoise color. I think this time, however, just for the fun of it, I think I'm going to make it purple. Wouldn't that be fun? A purple eye. Wow. So I'm going to use, let's see, one of my favorite colors of purple, which is this color purple. Isn't that pretty? And I'm going to color. Now, the same thing, I'm not going to color into that stripe right there. See that? I'm going to leave that open. I'm going to leave that stripe white. Ooh, that looks kind of fun, doesn't it? That looks neat. All right. Very good. That is the only thing that you need your markers for, except for his claws. You can pick any color you want the claws to be. I think this time I'm going to make the claws hmm, orange. 
see this kind of orangey yellow color I have? I'm gonna make his claws orangey yellow. Ooh, look at that, creepy. Maybe he hasn't cleaned his claws in a long time because he's a monster. So you're gonna color just the claws and do the same on the other side. Awesome, okay, very good. Oop, there is, I forgot, one more thing that we need our markers for, and that is the little tiny polka dots. We need to fill in all those little polka dots because that would be really hard to do with watercolor. So let's do it with permanent marker. Um, I think this time I'm gonna make his, um, let's see, I think I'm gonna make his fur blue. So I might make these, hmm, maybe green this time, that'd be fun. So I'm gonna take a really cool color of green, look at that color of green, and I'm gonna do all of his polka dots in dark green. See how I just barely touch the tip of the marker? in there and get all the polka dots. Just keep coloring in the polka dots very carefully. See how I'm almost just touching the marker as opposed to trying to draw or color with it. I'm just touching it onto the paper. Now these are a very special kind of marker that have alcohol in them and they are my favorite. All of the children that are in my life know how special these markers are to me. There we go. So now, so that's all the things that you need the markers for. The eyeball, the polka dots, and the claws. Okay? Now you have to choose what color you want the top of the eyelid to be. Hmm. Let's see. I think I'm going to choose this color blue. Alright, see that blue? That's what I'm going to do. So now for me, I'm just going to draw on the paper and get my color all ready. See, that's what's really fun about these gels. You just draw it on the paper and then oh, you just get some off of it. And I am going to paint the eyelid with the watercolor paints. Now something that's really important when you're coloring is that one side of the painting is always going to be a little darker than the other side because of shading. So you can see I just right now I just colored that in normal. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a little extra color on this side where the shading lines are because when light's coming onto things one side of it will be a little darker and the other side will be a little lighter and that's called shading and it's really really important that you understand how to do that in drawing. So let's pretend like the light is coming in, coming from this direction, which means that there's going to be a little of darker places on this side and lighter places on that side. Does that make sense? As you, you don't have to completely understand that yet. Just know that it's kind of important that you put a little more color on one side than the other. That's called shading, okay? See how I did that? See, so now one side is a little darker than the other side. All I did was just do two coats of that same color. All right, now I'm gonna pick a different, let's see, hmm, maybe I'll do, that's kind of a cool color, isn't it? I think I'll use that to paint the rest of his fur. It's gonna be a cool color. All right, again, see so, you now this is how mine works, but you can, you can, mom can help you. You can do any kind of different watercolors that you want, okay? Pick up some of that paint. Oh, now this is really fun, because you do not have to be, you can be really messy with this. Just paint, 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 paint. You're just painting his fur, so you're making it look stripey and like there's little stripes of color. See that? It doesn't have to be precise at all. You can just have so much fun. You can just paint around, make different colors. The only thing you have to be careful of is don't get any paint in his teeth because I want his teeth to stay white. Understand? 
So be more careful when you're around the teeth. Look, I even got a little bit of paint in that tooth, which is okay, but just kind of be careful. See how I'm just working around those teeth? Because I want those teeth to stay looking white as much as they can. So how's that? Can you see that? See that? Now guess what? We have to do our shading again. So on this side of him, remember the light's coming in from this side. So on this side of him, we need just a little bit more color. So I'm just gonna make it a little darker over there. See that? Just a little bit darker. There we go, see that? Wonderful, I love working with watercolors because watercolors are very easy and fun and they're what's called translucent. You can kind of see through them and still see the paper, see that? All right, now once you get his little body done and his eyeball done, the next most important thing is his arms and legs. Hmm, what color? Again, you can do any color you want. Any color is great. I think I'm gonna do a light green, okay? So I'm gonna pick that green, see that green? But you could, I mean, your monster could be purple, it could be pink, it could be brown, it could, it could be black if you wanted. That might be a little tricky to do, but you could do it. So now this is really easy. You're just gonna take that color and paint it into his arms. That's it, see? Paint, 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 paint. Paint all the way down. Kind of be careful down here. Try to keep that color inside the lines, okay? Let's do the same thing on the other side. Working with paintbrushes with watercolor is really fun. Especially when you've done the drawing yourself. I love doing a drawing and then being able to color it in because it's like having your own coloring book. What do you think of that? Does that look pretty good? All right, let's do some more. Let's do his legs. I'm gonna make his legs and arms the same color. Guess what? You don't even have to do that. You could make his legs and arms different colors if you wanted. That's what's Fun about being creative. So cute. All right. Be careful when you get down to the bottom. Make sure that you've got that all worked out. Oh, how does that look? It looks pretty good, doesn't it? But we're missing something. We again need a little bit of shading on this side of his body. We don't need any shading here or here because the light's coming in that way. But on this side, we need to do a little bit more color. So we're gonna, I'm gonna add some more color over here. Okay. And I'm gonna add some more color on this side. There we go. And I'm gonna add a little bit of emphasis color on his little funny wrinkles down here. That's kind of fun, huh? See that? See how I added some, call that emphasis color. See? Very good. Awesome. You know what, I might even, I think I'm gonna use a slightly darker green to really give more shading. So I'm gonna try that. Hopefully I don't mess it up, but if I do, it's okay. You can always start over again. Yeah, I'm gonna do a little bit. See how I'm using a darker green? There we go, that looks better. So that I have good shading on that side. Ha ha, that looks better, okay. Doesn't he look so funny and so silly? Now there's one last little thing you can do if you want to. Just take your permanent pen and you can give him some ground to stand on. All you do is just make a couple of lines, couple of lines, couple of lines. You don't have to do this if you don't want to, but I like to give him some ground to stand on. And then usually I take a little bit of brown and then I just paint those lines a little bit, see? Like this. Huh. Gave him a little bit of ground to stand on. See? Isn't that cute? There you go. How's yours turning out? I'd love to see what yours looks like. Oh, there he is staying on the bottom. 
He's pretty funny, isn't he? The most important thing you do with your drawings whenever you're finished is you have to sign your name. And most artists sign their name in the right-hand corner. Don't ever sign your name up high because that distracts the eye of the person looking at the art. Do it down at the bottom. You can pick what you want your signature to be. Mine is G West and I always put the year on it. See that? That way it helps me, especially with you while you're young. When you look back, you can go, oh, I drew that one when I was 10 because you'll always have the year and you'll have your signature there. I hope you guys have a wonderful day and I can't wait to see your finished pieces whenever it's done. One little extra thing while this is drying, you might want to take it and press it in a book so that it will dry very flat when it's all finished and then you can display it proudly in your house. Have a wonderful day. Bye bye.